This tutorial is brought to you by the Department of Performing Arts Technology at the University of Michigan. In this tutorial, I'm going to take you through the steps of assigning controllers created in TouchOSC on a mobile device to objects within motion and controlling them in real time. I'm going to start by going to my dock and launching Osculator. Osculator is an application that we've explored in earlier tutorials and it simply translates the incoming information from TouchOSC into standard MIDI event data. In this case, I have a layout that I've created for my iPhone and I have three faders, fader 1, 2, and 3. I've assigned event types to each of these faders as a MIDI continuous controller and I've given each one a value, 1, 2, and 3, just to keep it simple. Both my mobile device and my laptop are on the same Wi-Fi network, and both my mobile device and osculator are set to the same port number. And to test my connection, I can look at these dots right here, these squares, and as I move the controls on my device, I should see those turn green. There's two, and there's three. So everything works, everything is communicating. I'm going to just move this aside for a second and go back to my dock and launch motion. When I launch motion and I go to new from the file menu, it will ask me to select a project preset. Now I've set this particular one as my default because it's the size that I work in mostly, but you can use any preset you like for this example. After selecting your preset, we'll choose OK. And the idea here is to simply create a shape and control a few of its parameters from TouchOSC from my iPhone. The first thing we need to do is go to the top here, the toolbar, and grab the rectangle tool. And I'm going to draw one rectangle. Very simple. The next thing we need to do is decide which parameters we would like to control. Well, in order to do that, I'm going to go here on the left to the inspector and down here to properties. I think the first thing that I'm going to assign to my first fader is going to be the scale. So if I just grab the scale here, I can set the size. So we'll take it back to eh, close to where it was. And I'm going to right click or control click the word scale. When the window pops up, I'm going to go down almost to the middle and find MIDI and select it. You'll notice that the inspector switches us automatically to the Behaviors tab and the control type is set to Learning. There is no ID number and there's no value, but Motion is listening for the very next controller information to come in and it will automatically assign that to this particular behavior. So on my mobile device, on my iPhone, I'm going to grab the first slider, fader, and simply move it. And it works. Now a note about the scale. If I take my fader on my mobile device and I move it all the way to the zero position, my rectangle gets no smaller than the original size that I drew it. If I want it to get smaller, I need to make this smaller physically. And then when I scale it up, it's still going to only scale it by the same amount or same percentage, unless I change the scale value here in the left. So if I just drag that over, let's say to about there, now I'm essentially multiplying whatever value I send it by 4. So now I'm actually increasing it quite a lot more much more dramatic effect. The next thing that I want to control is the opacity of my square, of my rectangle. So to do that, I'm going to head back to the inspector, to the properties inspector, and I'm going to go down under the blending section to opacity. I'm going to right click or control click and go down in the list and find MIDI. And once again, motion changes us over to the behaviors tab and takes us right to the new behavior, which is in the learning mode. And I'm going to grab the second fader. Now, 
you probably notice that the value is changing, sliders are moving, but nothing's happening here with my rectangle. And again, that's because I need to go back to the properties menu, and for opacity in particular, we need its starting point to be zero. So only when its starting point is zero will my fader or my controller work the way that it's intended. So I have my one fader controlling the opacity and the other fader controlling the scale. So I can move it in a couple different ways at one time. I have one more fader and one more control that I'd like to assign. So I'm going to go back to the properties tab in the inspector and this time I would like to rotate my square, my rectangle, on the y-axis. So I'm going to go to rotation and I'm going to click the disclosure triangle just to the left of the word which opens up the rotation controls. So this lets me have access directly to X, Y, and Z individually without controlling everything at once. Now in this case I would like this rectangle to rotate on the Y axis. So I'm going to hover over the Y. I'm going to right click or control click. And again, I'm going to find MIDI. And once again, motion is going to switch us to the behaviors tab to the new behavior. And it again is in learning mode until I grab the third fader. And there it is. So now I have three faders assigned. I can scale my rectangle, I can adjust the opacity of my rectangle, or I can rotate my rectangle. Now that's not quite enough rotation for me, so again I'm going to go back to that particular behavior and I'm going to grab the scale and I'm going to spin it all the way up. So that when I do grab this, one full time spins it actually several times and then maybe that's too much so let's go back and try about halfway eh, maybe still a little too much but it's a nice effect so I can change its opacity I can spin it around and I can scale it now if I click on the stage to the left of my rectangle I won't see the bounding box here and then I can see what it would really look like in a performance application So not bad. If you had more faders, you could assign more controls simply by following the steps that I've shown you here. Find the control, right click or control click, and then assign it to MIDI, and then touch your controller and it should just work.